Sailing can take you just about anywhere you want to go. From jungles to forests, big cities to remote villages, from places where you learn things to places where you eat things. But our favorite kind of destination is one where we're surrounded by nature and where adventure is around every corner. <laughs> On the island of Sao George in the Azores archipelago, adventure is not just an exciting way to pass the time. It's a way of life. Cheers. But for now, we're wrapping up our stay in nearby Horta and are getting ready to say goodbye to our first port of call since our Atlantic crossing. Buddy, what happened to our attractive dog? Well, I took him to the vet to get his pet passport. So now Oso can go anywhere in the EU for a year. Isn't that cute? He's got a little passport book. That is cute. Why is he ugly? Well, okay, so on the crossing here, Oso got these crazy clumps, but they couldn't get the mats out. So they had to just cut everything off. This is our naked little baby now. <laughs> Small head with he likes a big it. body. He's like, yeah, let's dance, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, baby. Oh, he's, like, Let he's me gonna out. escape. Ah, he's ah, gonna escape. Oh, oh. One of our favorite things about being in Horta was that we were super close to this awesome hike and we were able to walk it just about every evening with Oso. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Well, buddy, are you ready to say goodbye to Fayal tomorrow? Not really. To be honest, this is the prettiest place I've been to in a really long time. If you and Osa want to take the boat and keep going, I'll just hunker down here. Yeah, it just <laughs> feels so long ago that we got here on a sailboat. And if I could just teleport my brain to this moment, maybe 10 days into the passage, and just reassure myself, it's gonna be worth it. You're gonna really, really love where you end up. I wish I could do that. <laughs> After the crossing, I just wanted to like dive deep into a place and to just love that place. And I feel like I've really recharged my batteries here and I'm kind of ready to take on the challenge of adventuring again. You wanna hike up that volcano again? <laughs> I don't know if I wanna go up there again, but now I am like truly excited to go sailing tomorrow, which I would not have said that three weeks ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> Did you like Fayal? Yeah. Oh, you're so cute. Little fur baby sleepy. Yeah. He's my spirit animal. <laughs> Man, this is cool uh, sailing between islands. We've never really done this. So where are we going? So we are heading to the island of Sao George. We're heading to the town of Velush. We're hoping to kind of make this the beginning of us actually jumping around, checking out all the islands in a relatively quick way. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You're crying like a little baby. Also, kiss it. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> I like light wind sailing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Every time he's just so confused. What are you doing? He's like, I can't decide if I like, I kind of like it, but I kind of don't like it. <laughs> So it's kind of crazy when you think about just how much time we spend on deck. And our favorite thing to do while we're hanging out on watch is to listen to audiobooks with Audible. Because we both love to read. And it's a way for us to read books while we are trimming the main sheet, keeping an eye out for traffic, seeing if the winds change and if we need to reef or anything. In fact, so if you look in my app right now, I'm listening to Endurance by Alfred Lansing. That's all about Ernest Shackle expedition to the Antarctic. I mean, just listening to this incredible story has been really fun for me to like get the adventure fix when things are a little boring, but also to be grateful for how relatively stable and safe my life is. And in addition to being able to buy audiobooks on Audible, you also get a lot of free content with your membership. You get podcasts as well as Audible originals. So if you haven't tried Audible before, I highly recommend it. If you want to sign up now, new members get 30 days of Audible for free if they go over to audible.com slash project Atticus or text project Atticus to 500 500 and also a huge thank you to audible for sponsoring this video
gosh, I'm not used to such teeny marinas. It is gorgeous. Just feel really close to all the other boats. Oh, this is definitely a new experience for me, just rafting up to other boats in a really tight marina. Stressful, but we did everything nice and slow and it worked out. Are you happy we're on land, kind of? He's like, uh, yeah, but how do I get over there? Well, this marina is definitely unique to us at least you know it's got this giant kind of stone and cement wall on one side and then this giant cliff on the other and so it's really protected even though it's really small but what's really cool is you can hear just tons of songbirds playing all the time everywhere on this giant cliff it's really pretty i like all the little ducks i know baby you want to eat them you want to eat them, I know. <laughs> the village of Velash is one of the oldest settled communities in Sao George, dating back to the year 1460. Velash in Portuguese means sails, and it's possible that the town got its name from the many sailboats that historically used this semi-protected natural harbor. What's this dragon about, bud? I'm gonna have to look it up, but it's really intimidating. It's, it's like, a really well done thing. He's like hanging out in his little yeah. bathtub. To me, it looks like he's getting ready to pounce. You know, maybe it's sort of like Terminator 2 yeah. and someone threw him into a vat of liquid metal. We later found out that the island of Sao George got its name from Saint George. The legend goes that Saint George fought a dragon to save the life of a princess, and it's this story that all of this beautiful artwork depicts. Locals say that the island was named after Saint George because the island itself resembles a partially submerged sleeping dragon, with the tip that we sailed by looking like the head. And I can kind of see where they're coming from. Park sort of reminds me of Alice in Wonderland, the queen, where everything's oh, yeah. red and black and yeah. white. It's really cool, and there are flowers everywhere, and it smells so good. Look at the birds! Oh, you see the birds? Oh. Oh, no. All right, well, I did not feel like cooking tonight, so we're going out to eat, tasting the local cheeses and garupa, which is how they say grouper, I think. We're pretty sure it's a grouper. And how do you say the fish again? Uh, garupa. 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 Okay, gotcha, thank you. So what's going on here, buddy? So we were down below trying to sleep and we heard this almost like a bee swarming sound. Turns out it's just a bunch of birds that are just swarming these hills and flying and going kind of nuts. <laughs> so I'm curious to like research what the heck is going on. If they're like mating or who knows? One thing that's funny is we were just commenting how much quieter it is here at <laughs> night than in Horta. It was like really quiet 40 minutes ago or 30 minutes ago. How's Oso doing? He's very concerned. There's <laughs> one duck in the water. I think he's convinced it's the duck's he's job. He's like, are you doing this? <laughs> All right, what are we doing? Okay, we are going to go rappelling down waterfalls in Sao Jorge. Apparently, there's a lot of altitude, cascading water. There's gonna be jumping, I think, and maybe zip lining. And we're gonna be doing it with Aventure Azores Adventures. And I'm really excited. All right. Safety first, buddy. This is so cool that like with the super green hills all around us. I feel like I'm an astronaut. Getting back from battle or getting ready for the state in the world. <laughs> Sleep cause I miss you, baby. But you got the Fabio so, look going with I know. thing unzips. I'm too hot, man. I gotta cool off a little bit. So we're going down there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real waterfall. Okay, here we go. <laughs> How did I do? Is that pretty much what you do? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> what do you think, buddy? That was so cool. Thank you. I can't believe I just propelled down a waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not. I've jumped the gun a little bit and jumped off the cliff a little early. Yeah. But you know what? All's well that ends well, right? <laughs> so alive. 
Where sure. are you doing, buddy? Nothing. Don't Nothing to see here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Okay, follow instructions this time, buddy. Think you got it? I think so. <laughs> One, two, three, jump! Nice jump! You did it, buddy! Are you being safe, pregnant lady? Yeah, I might be a pregnant, repelling, canyoning lady, but I promised my mom no more jumping from high points. <laughs> Into the water. <laughs> You're such a good mom already. I know. Take care of the assets. Yeah. He's a canyoning donkey. <laughs> you should see him go down that thing. Yeah. And how did you get into canyoning? I think this came from my father. In the past, my father worked for the government for the, the cliffs. They come up to put the big rocks down. The job today, the name is vertical service. And uh, when I'm young, make my harness, the big bags of the cement come with um, the same material of the harness. And uh, I build my harness, stole the rope of my father, and uh, go to the, the river, the caves, and the, the canyons explore with my friends. So we were wondering what those crazy birds at night were called, and they're called Kagao. I can't say Kagao? So Luis is taking us home, but he's showing us his hometown, which is Caleta, the port town. It just so happens that they're doing a bull fight today, which is super cool. I think he was saying they don't harm the bull, so it's more of a sport where they try to kind of lasso the bull. I'm gonna have to get in there and show them how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> Miguel, who's one of Luis's guides, is actually going to run with the bulls today. I thought he was joking. He was like, I go. And then he changed into his swim trunks and he was like, well, sometimes you have to jump in the water if the bull's coming after you. <laughs> so how many times have you done this before? Maybe four times. Any uh, advice for first timers? Uh... Run. <laughs> I guess there's four bulls total and the first one is already in the water, so one bull down. Yeah, it's really cool because you can see how some of the guys just kind of stand in the middle to the back, you know, but they're really safe. Then you see the guys on the front line, they're a little daring. Then you see the guys on the wall, they're like taunting the bull. <laughs> <laughs> Big show of masculinity. <laughs> So Luis, you were saying that the main economy here in South George is cattle, basically. Yeah. Cows. Mostly for cheese production? Yes, almost. Now yeah. it's changed for meat. Yeah. Because they pay more money. It's safe to say that a lot of the people here work with cows. They almost, work with yes, cows. for sure. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, because it makes a lot more sense to think of it that way. Handling cattle is what most of these people do, so getting together once a year and running away from a bull makes a lot of sense at that point. So all I know about this game is that it includes an olive and drinking, and it's crazy. I got my pit, I'm ready to go. Okay, so I think yeah, you just spit the pit of the olive as far as you can, and you got this eight meters here. Okay, I think I won. <laughs> Good job, bud. You're off the charts. I'm first place. <laughs> The next day, Luis offered to take us on a hike to check out his favorite spot on the whole island. So just our luck, we got fog again today. <laughs> but Luis was saying, if you go down a little bit, he can see better. Let's go. Let's okay. do it. <laughs> Vamoosh. was saying this plant is good for tea as well. You can dry the top. It smells really sweet and almost like honey. And apparently the tea is to kind of calm your stomach. This is a yam. They in the past do that. Oh. That way. Cat. All right. Ooh, <laughs> very stylish. Yeah. <laughs> That's 
after our longest ocean passage, I don't think we could have asked for a more hike-worthy destination than the Azores. I think we've got at least 10,000 steps a day since we've been visiting the islands. We are at the second waterfall, which is called Cascada Pequeña, and I am ready because it is hot. That felt so good. That felt amazing. Yeah, and that water is cold. Oh. This is Faja da Caldera, one of several Fajas on São Jorge. A Faja is basically a flat extension of land at the base of these tall cliffs. In fact, they are literally debris fields left over from massive landslides that occurred long ago. In this little town over here, there used to be a community of like 300 people, but in 1980, there was an earthquake that actually landlocked all the residents here. They kind of got spooked and a lot of them moved permanently. And now there's only four permanent residents that live down here. It's gorgeous, but very isolated. And Luis was saying it's a great place for the most delicious clams to grow because you get the salt water from the ocean and then you get all the fresh water coming down from these calderas. Okay, so let's go. You want to right. try our clams, right? From yes. our lagoons. What are we doing here, ladies? I'm going to say first in Portuguese. So, a mejuas a bulhão pato. A mejuas? A mejuas? These clams from our lagoon here. Oh, cool. And measures a bullion pat. A bullion pat. See how heavy they are? That's really heavy. Yeah, and big and tasty. Count. We are going to use also parsley, <laughs> lemon, of course, lemon okay. is life, garlic, <laughs> and we have olive oil and white wine. And is this garlic in olive oil? No, in oil. First, I'm going, just going to use this one. Okay. You have the olive oil, just a little bit. And I'm going to give you just a little bit of parsley. So, this is for you. Okay. And now, I'll show you. This is really quick. Yeah. You can put all, all the clams them? inside. Like a chef, you have to do like this. Oh, do right. A okay. little bit. Bam. What? More, more. More, more. Bam. And then you just... Oh, like popcorn. Yeah, like popcorn. Yeah. Because we are waiting for them to open oh. and uh, release all the seawater. And we know when they are ready, when they all are all open. Is it heavy? Yeah. This is one kilo of clams. Yeah. Feels like Oso's in there. <laughs> open, squeeze a little lemon. Don't be afraid. We want that flavor. <laughs> <laughs> now you can do like this as oh, well. Oh, beautiful. Put some parsley, please, on top. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at this, buddy. Wow, that does look really, really good. Oh my gosh. Now you need to taste it. I'm going to put a table for you on okay. the outside. Okay, well, thank you very thank much. You. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> my mouth is watering. Some lemon again, mm -hmm. because it's always a good idea. <laughs> and of course, I'm going to serve it just a little wow. bit. So you taste it, it's with hands, guys. So okay. Okay. you are in Portugal, in Ireland, you need to enjoy. I'm going to bring you some bread <laughs> okay, as well. Cool. And okay. is there a special way to eat it? Just No, pull, just with just your go mouth. In. Oh, yes, go yes in. with mouth, yes. Mm. Yeah, see? That is that so is good. Just the experience of hiking down here and meeting Teresa. And she's like this flower in the middle of nowhere, just like super stoked and mm -hmm. pumped about her life. And, and this beautiful view. Too. Yeah, mm -hmm. what a cool experience, man. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> What do you think of Azorian wine? <laughs> it is so good. And as a disclaimer, I did a lot of research about drinking alcohol while pregnant, and I learned that you can drink alcohol occasionally. <laughs> Buddy, you gotta eat the clams and not just drink the juice. <laughs> this is a vessel for the juice. <laughs> <laughs> think we did good, bud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you gave me just that sauce and bread, that would be acceptable <laughs> as a meal. Yeah, Luis, thanks for taking yeah. us there. That was awesome, man. Nice. Do it real quiet. Oh, so you shouldn't have rung the bell. Yeah, come on. Wow, this little town is just so picturesque. It's just like really cozy feeling. Oh, Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, is this our ride back? Yeah. 
for Hello. baby's first ATV ride. Mama, let's go. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out this week's video. I wanted to spend a couple of minutes to thank and welcome some of our newest patrons. So to our newest Bosun level patrons, thank you so much, Skip and Jenny Richards, and John and Tammy Cameron. And finally, to our newest deckhand level patrons, a big thank you to Dave and Steven from SV Stella Marie, Harrison Richardson, MJ Loco, David Plory, Chip Stock, Peter Chrisholm, Dan Sanchez, Mark Thompson, Robert Lennox, Joe Parrish, Ron and Priscilla Heffield, John Tully, Paul Coburn, Kim Parsons, Scott and Lynette Middleton, and Everett Andrews. Thank you guys so much for all of your love, encouragement, and support. Without it, we wouldn't be able to make these videos. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.